I was uh, listening uh, very, uh, you know, carefully to the previous speaker, and I agree to a lot of extent that there should not be a trade-off between uh, growth and actually doing justice. So uh, let me just speak a little bit from my experience. Um, I am a, you know, a business lawyer and represent a lot of companies in the life sciences area. So what I have, my experience has been that uh, in most of these cases, which relates to say, uh, you know, patents, intellectual property, or if it is like, you know, say uh, pricing uh, related issues, we find that the courts tend to uh, go with the larger public interest, okay? Uh, despite, you know, the merits being truly prima facie, uh, perhaps being in favor of, you know, the, uh, the one who has gone to uh, the court in the first place. So we find that through the court system, there is a certain uh, business uncertainty, and it also doesn't give like an investor confidence. One of the reasons is that it takes a very long time from the court of like in the first instance through to the appeal in the Supreme Court, it can minimum take you between 12 to 15 years to get a quietus in any case. So that's the time thing. The second thing is that, you know, we are also guilty of taking incessant, you know, time for for the next hearing. So the, that, you know, costs uh, time and, you know, including the cost to the client because the fees of senior lawyers, as you are aware, can be pretty high. And the third aspect is that, uh, you know, uh, there is no one solution to the problem because uh, the number of uh, cases that are pending uh, as of like the 2022 May is 4.7 crore cases. Out of which it's very interesting to see the breakup that about three crores is civil cases, two crore criminal cases, and about 87% is actually pending in the subordinate courts. And most of it is in five states of Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, West Bengal, Bihar, and Gujarat. Okay. And about 12.4% is in the 24 high courts. So, which, which, which tells us something, this, this data tells us something that it is not like, you know, a silver bullet uh, that is uh, possible for uh, addressing all these very different, you know, problems. I think that for, say, you know, under trials, criminal cases, there is a different solution that is required. For civil cases, it is really a process related issue and the processes must be like, you know, more streamlined. Um, and uh, where, you know, the economic and the business cases are concerned, I can tell you from experience that um, it has been, uh, it is, um, say, in the case of, you know, a patent. The patent has a time period of validity of, uh, you know, 20 years, effectively about 10 years. So by the time the even the division bench, which that is the second year of, you know, appeal, they provide the uh, judgment, the patent is already over. So it becomes infructuous. So I think that the way to address it and to kind of build that uh, investor confidence in our court system is to try and address these issues differently. One other issue, I, I, it'll be remiss of me not to kind of mention it because it's pretty recent, that the Tribunals Reforms Act of 2021 they did away with about seven uh, tribunals now and, you know, even earlier in the 2015 iteration, several more. And the idea was that the tribunals were not doing the job of what it was intended for them to do. Uh, but the reasons have been like, you know, fairly uh, flaky, I must tell you, as to why they should be kind of, you know, um, uh, ab abolished. And I find that it was like throwing the baby with the bathwater because some of the tribunals actually did the job that it was meant to do. And we, by removing them as like, you know, cost cutting uh, mechanism, I guess, you know, uh, by the government, it has taken away something that actually worked. So I feel that there was no, uh, you know, closer look at what, you know, the tribunals could have aided. Okay. And if I have time, the last point that I want to make is that this yo-yo that the government does on um, bills coming through and the acts coming through. And one such example is the Arbitration and Conciliation Act. The 1996 Act was based on the UNCITRAL rules. It was good. It worked. Okay. Now, the 2015 iteration and the 2021 iteration makes arbitral awards 
uh, you know, uh, more of a challenge uh, to be enforced because it brings in ideas like fraud. You know, the, the court now can go into the uh, fraud and corruption behind a um, contract, okay, which is not possible even under the civil procedure code. So this kind of additional uh, hurdles would actually kind of diminish the effectiveness of um, arbitration being an alternate resolution where there is fate of like, you know, the system on alternate re resolution. So I'll stop my comments here.